Today I have three watercolor fall DIYs from Dollar Tree Napkins. I'm Brandy, and this is Making It My Own. Alright, using Dollar Tree items, we're going to start off with one of these little wooden boxes. Doesn't matter which one you get. I have some of these napkins, and these are the longer ones. I have some spackling and a little spatula. We're going to start off by filling in the holes in this little llama. I chose the llama because it seemed to have smaller holes, less work to have to do. So I'm just going to take the spackling with my fingers. Don't be afraid to get your hands dirty. This washes off easily. And I'm going to press it down in each one of those holes. You have to kind of press it and then push it to the side. Otherwise, it'll just go straight through. So you have to kind of do it at an angle to make it stay in there. We want to fill these in because we're going to be putting something on top. Now I've taken the flat side of my spatula. You can use a scraper or anything that you have and just pushing it down and then going across the top. So you see what's left on the back. You just can scrape those little crumbs out and put them back into your container. Now once you get those all filled in, you'll be ready to let it dry. There you go. Be sure you put your lid back on that so it doesn't dry out. Then you'll want to put it in a place where it can dry. And while that is drying, we're going to start working on the bottom part of the box. You can use paint, you can use stain, you can leave it the same color it is, you can use furniture markers, whatever you want to use here. I'm just going to take some of my antiquing wax, I love this stuff, I'm going to add some water, that's all that is in that bottle. Mix it up to make a stain. It has virtually no smell and is very easy to clean up. I use wipes. You can use whatever kind of, you know, wipes that are okay for your skin. They seem to work really good. Baby wipes, whatever you got. I'm going to dip it in there. Kind of, you don't want to put too much in. You don't want it dripping necessarily, but enough to give you the coverage that you want. You can always add more to it or put another coat on there if you want to. So you're just going to go around all of the sides and see, you definitely want to protect your surface because it does make kind of a mess. This is a wax, so be sure you mix it well with your water. Okay, and then be sure you go around that rim on the top. You want this to have a nice finished look. We want everything to be nice and clean. Go along on the inside of the box. I wanted to show you this instead of completely taking it away because you can get into those corners just by rolling it and pushing it down with your finger. That way you get right down into the corner, just like I did there. And you'll have no white spots left. And you're just gonna go from side to side. I like the wipes rather than using a brush. Um, it just works better. It gives me the coverage that I like and it's still sheer enough that you can see the wood grain. And I think that that's important. We're gonna make something really cute with this box. Alright, so we're going to put that aside and let it dry. Once your spackling is dry, you're going to go around just the edges. You're not going to go onto the top. We're going to do something different there. So just carefully go around the edges of this box so that it matches the bottom. Or if you're painting, instead of doing this technique, you know, you can go ahead and put your paint there too. And then we're going to do also the inside really important that that spackling is dry when you do this because if it's not and you press down it's going to push the spackling out the front then you're going to have a mess so I'm going to go on top and put down some linen white chalk paint you can use whatever type of paint you have you can use acrylic it really does not matter here the reason I'm using white is because I want my watercolor napkin to really stand out So there we go. I'm going around the edges carefully so that it doesn't get on the sides where we stained it. And I'm just making sure that there's no holes and you don't necessarily see that little llama through there. So there we go. Once it is dry, you can see the outline a little bit there, but that won't matter. I'm going to flip it over and just trim out around the box top. You don't have to do this exactly. This is, it's so much easier to do it this way. 
Don't bother yourself with trying to cut something so thin perfectly. So I'm going to use some Mod Podge here, and I'm just using the mat. I'm going to squeeze a little bit out there. You don't want to get too much because you don't want it to be, you don't want it to make that tissue paper of that napkin to tear. So just enough that it's going to give it, a, you know, some stickiness. And then you're going to take just a single layer, so be sure you separate your layers and lay that on the top. I'm just lightly laying it and trying to get it centered before I press it down. You do have a little bit of room to, to move here if you need to. And then from the inside out, I'm just gonna press with my fingers. Don't be too concerned if you get little wrinkles here and there, it's okay. This is watercolor and it virtually disappears. So you can see here, I'm just trying to, to press out and away from the center and press down around my edges. Just like that. Simple. I'm not concerned that it's hanging over and that there's some pieces that, you know, are going over the top of the box. That's not a problem. I'm going to add a little bit more. I'm not going crazy with this Mod Podge, but I want enough to seal it in so that this will last. You can use glossy, you can use whatever, you know, Mod Podge you want to use. If you like a glossy look, you can do that. But I think with the stain, it's going to look better if I use matte. So that's why I chose it. Okay, and now carefully with your fingers, you can just push away. I'm pushing, not pulling. I'm pushing it down and then letting it kind of slide off of there. It's not wet, you know, it's only wet where the uh, top of the box is. So this dry part will pretty easily come off there. I'm just gently rolling off some of the pieces there. And then once it dries, you can take a sanding block and just very gently brush away the little edges. And you can see how pretty that is with the, the colored sides there, with the stain sides. I think it looks really nice. It's a very rustic look and of course you know I'm always striving for rustic but you do whatever you want these videos are for inspiration so you do what you like now what a cute little gift idea guys I wanted to show you this so here it is complete all dried and ready to go I've taken some raffia and stuck it in the bottom or whatever this is excelsior grass whatever this is you can use paper shreds then I've taken some seasonal candies here these are just some chocolates and I'm gonna put these down in the box. They're matching colors. Put the lid on it. What a cute little gift idea. So we're gonna go back in the inside of this lid now, since we know what we wanna do with it. And I'm using a window cling. You can use a sticker, you can paint this, do this however you wanna do it. You can use a piece of fabric even maybe. Make a special note and attach that. Whatever you wanna do here. I'm just gonna clip this off and make this work. I'm going to use some spray adhesive just to try something different. Protect your surface here. Make sure the area is ventilated. And then put down my little leaf. And by the way, the leaf has stayed here. It's, you don't have as much time to work with it with the spray adhesive as you do with a glue stick or Mod Podge. So be sure you get it where you want it because it is not coming up. So I'm just going to rub that down and make sure it stays. Then I'm going to put our lid back on, take a little piece of jute. I'm just kind of making sure I have the even amounts on the sides for my bow. You can use ribbon here. You can use um, anything you want. Anything you want here. Some string. You can use some baker's twine. Um, whatever. Whatever looks good to you. But this is rustic to me and I like it. Farmhousey rustic, very cute. Just making my bow look pretty. And there we go. Isn't that cute? Who wouldn't love getting that as a little pick me up? Give me a thumbs up if you think you would enjoy something like this. Okay, so on to the next one. We're gonna take some little wood cutouts from Dollar Tree, another one of the same napkins, and then you can get, I got mine thrifted, this little wood piece but it's, I think it's a seven by five I think is what I measured but you can use any little wood piece that you can get out of crafter square different shapes but the same purpose probably 
gonna use a paint repair marker also and then I'm just trying to decide again which of the little cutouts I'm gonna use I'm making sure that the surface is smooth enough Sometimes when you get them, they're not sanded, so be sure that you sand it down or it's, it, it could cause a problem with getting everything to stick down. And your finished project won't be as nice if you've got little pieces of splinters poking out everywhere. It's harder to work with and you hurt your little fingers. Then you can't craft. Nobody wants that. We want to keep you busy crafting. Okay, so for this one, I am going to use a glue stick. Just to show you, if you don't have Mod Podge or school glue or some type of a liquid glue, you can use a glue stick for this type of thing. Now, I fussy cut this napkin. I mean, I left some white spots and I am totally okay with that. But off camera, I got, I got in there. Try to remove as much white as possible, but I'm not gonna sweat the other pieces of white that are still there. Not a big deal. Okay, so I'm just pressing this down again try to make sure that you lay it in the right position first because when you try to pick it up it might tear on you and you don't want that rather than cutting off my sides here i'm just going to go press them down i'm going to press them down into that little dip and i like the way it looks i'm okay with that hanging over not a problem i'm going to go around it with my glue stick and press it right down it kind of makes it look a little more like it's hand painted maybe You just want to be careful. Use a very gentle, light touch, little feathery strokes to make everything stick down. This is so thin and you do not want to tear it. If you do, no big deal. You have a whole pack of napkins, but you know, save yourself some time and, and be gentle and careful the first time. Now you can just take the glue stick, put it on your finger, go around all your edges so that this will not peel up. And this is almost like sealing it in because we have a layer on the bottom and we have a layer on the top. Okay, so this needs time to dry, but it looks pretty, right? Once it's dry, we're going to make a final decision about which one of these we want to use. It came in a pack of six, and I've used the other ones on other projects. So four projects I've already used, and now we have two more. And I think I'm going to go with blessed, because I do feel blessed. I'm blessed to have you here. I'm blessed to have all my subscribers and viewers watching and leaving such kind comments. I'm blessed for the coffee that I get from you guys. I'm just blessed in general. My whole life, I'm just blessed. We need to remind ourselves sometimes. It's so easy to look at the negative things in our life. It's so easy to dwell on it, but we need to reflect on everything that we've prayed for and we've been given. Okay, so we need a stand for this, and I'm going to use one of these that I got at the thrift store. I think that brand comes from either Michael's or Hobby Lobby. Not sure, but it makes a really good base to hold up a sign. So I'm going to coat it down with some glue. That's some hot glue. Place this down on here. Make sure I got it in the right position in the back up as high or as low as you want it, press it down, hold it until it dries, and you can see it stands up nicely. Very balanced, it doesn't tip or totter one bit. Now we're gonna take this little stained wording with some hot glue and place it down. So I switched directions on this. I was just gonna do a little sign here, but then I decided to do a little something extra. I should have gone ahead and painted the base of the stand that it's on before I glued it down. But now I'm just gonna go ahead and do it now and it's not a big deal because it's a paint marker and this is so simple to do. It helps if you're doing a project that actually is wood and you want it to continue to look like wood if you kinda go with what you would think the grain would be. So if you're going side to side, do the entire thing side to side. If you're going up and down, do the entire thing up, up and down. Did you see that? 30,000 subscribers, guys. Is that not wonderful? Yes, it is. I love y'all so much. You're making this channel grow, and it's so important to me. It means so much to me. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. I'm glad that you're inspired by my videos, and I'm glad that you come back and see me every video. 
Okay, now the base is stained. The same color as the, woods, the little wood wording. Now I'm gonna put a simple bow right on the top of it. And just trying to decide, do I want it on the side? Do I want it on the center? Well, I decided on the center, and then when I did that, guess what else I decided to add? Yeah, you'll see in just a minute. You can decide at any point when I'm doing these crafts, you can stop. If you like the sign like it is right now, you can stop where you're at. If you wanna add a little something extra, add a bow. If you wanna add a something even extra to that, add some greenery, add some flowers. In just a minute, you'll see what I decided to do. I think you'll like it if you're a fan of all things rustic. Okay, so I'm just pulling that bow a little bit, pulling the tails, pulling the little ears up, trimming off my jute. Always put more than one knot so it will stay for you. So this is gonna go in the top center. It's gonna go on the lip there, right in between the, where it appears there would be like a step down. I'm gonna put it right in the top there. And you're gonna to need to hold that for a minute so that it doesn't slide or move on you. And I'm just holding it while I keep playing with the bow. And it looks good. Protect your fingers because I did get in the glue there but it wasn't too hot so I'm okay. Still got my fingerprints. And I'm just trimming up to make sure that my bow has the same dimensions on each side. And you can stop here if you would like super cute just the way it is or yep I decided to make a little pumpkin out of it I'm gonna take this little stem here this is just a piece out of the little bag you can get at Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna put it right on top give it a minute holding it in place so that it will dry oh my goodness is that not the cutest little end touch if you like it let me know okay now I'm gonna take another pack that's got a bigger picture on it and these are the bigger napkins so these are probably what you would maybe dinner napkins maybe they're luncheon and dinner napkins I don't know but they're two different sizes there's rectangles and squares these are the squares you let me know now I'm just taking this apart because I can use the other section for something else I'm gonna open it up cut it and then I'm gonna take my layers apart it's easier to cut if you leave both of your layers on there um, until you're finished cutting then you can peel them apart Again with the fussy cut, I sure did. Now this is a Dollar Tree frame. It had something else in there, but I've already used it for another project. I'm gonna use it again. It already, I had already put, in the, put the yellow and white checked paper in there for, I think it was a summer project. But it looks really good, I think, with this watercolor. So I'm gonna take my glue stick and put it all over that paper. It doesn't matter if it gets on the paper in an area that you're not putting your pumpkin. It doesn't matter. It's not gonna show. It will dry sheer and you'll never even know. I'm gonna try to center this. By the way, if you get, if you're doing this and you don't wanna cut around all those little extra leaves and stuff like on the bottom near that sunflower, just cut that stuff off. Nobody's ever gonna know. And I really think when you do these projects and you put them out and you share them, nobody is ever gonna know this came from a napkin, except maybe from a fellow YouTuber or a crafter. Nobody would even know. It's such a high-end look. I love how you can see the plaid right through the pumpkin that I put on top. I love that. I'm just going over my edges and very gently over the top with my glue stick. So I've shown you a couple of different techniques of how to use the glue stick when putting these down. You just be very careful, that's the important thing. I've gotten kind of used to it. Okay, so while that's drying, we're gonna work a little bit on the frame. You can use ribbons, you can use jute, anything that color coordinates to go on the top of here. Or you can leave it alone and not add anything to the top. I'm just going to take my jute. I'm going to take three pieces of it. This is about maybe seven or eight inches long. I didn't measure it, but just to give you an idea. And we're just going to put a simple bow here. All of this just overlap together. 
and I'm just making a little shoelace bow. Carefully tucking all those loops on the inside and then you're just going to gently pull back and forth, spread the loops apart, work on the knot section so that it stays tight there for you, and then trim off your tails at whatever length that you like. And I think that will be precious right there. And I, I do realize that bows are not for everyone, and that's fine. But I think fall is a comfy, cozy time of year, and any little extra texture that you can add just really makes a piece pop, and it makes it, you know, makes it your own. Gives it a little extra something for your, for your eye to find interest in. So there it is without it. And then this is what it will look like with it. And I've taken a little sunflower that just came off of a sunflower garland that I had from the thrift store. And we're gonna add that too. I'm gonna add the bow and then I cut the little stem part off the back so that the sunflower will lay flat. Otherwise it'll be at a weird angle and I don't want that. And just press it down right in the center. And that is that. What do you think? Cute, huh? So, here are all of these projects added into the rest of my projects so you can see how everything coordinates. I'll be linking the playlist for all my fall videos so that you can see all the projects in the background that you didn't see in today's video. And they fit in nicely and they are so cute. I'm so happy with all of these. I do have some that are not shown here. But they will be in that playlist, so no worries. You can find them. Look at that. So cute. What an interesting thing to be able to use something totally not intended for crafting. You know, a napkin, it's totally intended for a different purpose, but we've taken it and we've used it for something that is just beautiful. Best napkins I've ever seen at Dollar Tree, by far. Probably the prettiest napkins I've ever seen. Thank you so much for watching. If you're new here, I'd love for you to subscribe. Thanks to all of my people who've been here from the get-go and have joined us recently. Thanks for stopping by and I'll see you again soon. Bye.